We're back here on Extra Rounds. Please be joined once again by Travis Van Winkle. If you look at his IMDb page, uh, it, it has a lot of great titles on it. Transformers, uh, The Roadhouse, uh, the remake coming up. And unfortunately, it doesn't say Extra Rounds, but I want everyone to know that <laughs> Travis Van Winkle is a veteran here of Extra Rounds. Welcome back to the program. How are you? Uh, TJ, it's good to be back, man. Anytime I can talk about the UFC, I am always down. I mean, it's almost uh, topical with you because, I mean, I, I don't want to ask any, you know, too many pertinent details that give away anything, but are, are you like best friends with Conor McGregor working on this Roadhouse film? Oh, yeah. We had a sleepover the other night. You know, we definitely, <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, no, but I actually, uh, it was really nice to meet him. I met him when we were in the Dominican and had a great conversation with him. And I can see why him and Arnold are friends. You know, they yeah. are the paragon of self belief and of, vision and execution both of these guys they just see what they want and they go out after it and they make it happen it's they're they're very special it's one thing that i think a lot of people don't realize is because you know athletes especially like ufc fighters you know they have to have that self-belief and you know more often than not though a lot of the things that they say pre-fight gets chalked up to marketing a fight but conor mcgregor the things that he said when he you know got that name mystic mac he said that long before he even got to the UFC. He really, truly believed in, his, in, in himself. And, I mean, what better way to uh, to prove it than just look at uh, Conor McGregor's, basically, resume in, in mixed martial arts? It's impressive. It really is. I'm excited to see him come back. And that's what we talked about when I, I spoke with him in the Dominican. He was, you know, he's the biggest I've ever seen. And this dude right. was, you know, straight up, I think, ox. Uh, but he's he's definitely excited to come back. At least that he was when we spoke. Um but there is something about the psychology of fighters that I'm so drawn to. And that's why I love watching the UFC. I mean, for many reasons, I'm just a huge fan. And I love watching the poetry and motion. Like these guys are tacticians and they are highly skilled and they are amazing at what they do. But the psychology of it, the, the whole, the lead up and the, the curation of their mentality and their mindset leading up to their actual fight they've got the camp they surround themselves with incredible people and the main person that that actually is their main obstacle is themselves right and so they have to like strategize on how to create this beautiful mindset coming up to their fight and and it's, it's just so great to watch when they come down you know the the aisle they're walking up to see you know to, to basically get ready to go into the octagon i love looking into their eyes and thinking where are they right now Right. Like, yeah. Where, where where is their mind? And that's that's fascinating to me. Yeah, I mean, I think as an athlete in any sport, but especially fighting, when you get locked in, uh, you know, uh, an octagon with another grown man who's trained to kill you, you gotta have to be a little bit delusional, right? Like you gotta like not really think about the pitfalls and hazards of the job and task that's ahead of you. You just gotta think that you're bigger than the whole world. I would think. Yeah. Well, you you have to you have to acknowledge the fact that you're gonna get punched. You're gonna get kicked. You, you have to acknowledge that. And I think the, the, the win, like it's all about the win. Right. I'm better at you than this. Right. And I will do nothing. Will, nothing will stop me from reaching my goal. And at that kind of belief, there's like we all have to have that in our own lives. Right. You know, so yeah. I feel like I feel like it's it almost encapsulates the human the human condition. You know, these fighters, because we all go through that in our life where we're, we're facing something difficult and we try to get the right mindset to go into it so we can achieve our goal and achieve excellence. And it's just, I love it, man. I love the UFC. I love chatting to you about it. What, like, what, what do we think about the champions, the current I mean, listen, champions? What's happening? It's crazy now because, you know, I've been covering mixed martial arts uh, going on, honestly, almost 20 years, like 17, 18 years. And in that time, we've seen so many poster, you know, men and women come and go and one constant over the last, you know, it feels like a couple decades at this point is John Jones. John Jones is now atop the heavyweight division. He comes yeah. back and it looks like he doesn't miss a beat. And he does so uh, in a fight with Surreal Gone where I, I, there were questions that I had for John. I really was curious what John was going to look like at heavyweight. Can he get, you know, tagged by a heavyweight fighter the way that, you know, he, he had been tagged in his last couple fights at light heavyweight. And somehow John passes the test in flying colors without really having to answer any questions, right? That's like, the problem. That was my problem with it. I, it was such a highly anticipated fight. The moment gets there, you're so jazzed up to see him prove himself as a heavyweight. Yeah. And the fight ends in 40 seconds or whatever. And he, right. it, to me, it was such a letdown. My pay-per-view money, I thought that was 80 <laughs> bucks. I want back. But he did prove himself. I want to see him fight again. I actually would like them to run it back. So I think Sarah yeah. Gone is a strong fighter. He, he just gets in his head too much. 
Yeah, he, he definitely took the wrong approach, I think, with, with John. He can't give up his neck like that. Um, you know, th- there's a lot of talk about John maybe fighting Stipe. Uh, you know, I don't think that you can really do anything wrong with John. Like, just get him in there and get him fighting. Yeah, that fight, I, I don't know. That fight doesn't really entice me. You know, Stipe hasn't been in the game for that. Right. He's been out. So it's like it's like old news. I, I wish he would fight. I don't know. Who's the, who's the Russian guy that is pounding people? Yeah, Pavlovich? He's, Yes, that yeah. dude is knocking everybody out. His fists are are just like, yeah. I don't know. They weigh a ton. Right. No one can stand in his way. Let's see that fight. Let's right. test John Jones with that. And that answers some of my questions. If he fights a Pavlovich, right? you would think at least. I thought it was going to be the same way with Surreal Gone, but Gone never got his hands on him. Pavlovich, no. he's going to test that chin of John Jones. I need to see it. No. What do we think about? I for me, the fight of the last decade was Makachev versus Volkanovski. It was a great fight. Phenomenal fight. I, fight of I the thought, last decade for me. I thought Makachev won. Joe Rogan had some different thoughts about it. It was a very close fight. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, Makachev, he's got a really tough task in being essentially the protege of Khabib Nurmagomedov. And uh, I think that he has all the tools to be better than Khabib. Now, Khabib has that that flawless record. Uh, Makachev, you know, already had that spoiled. But uh, the bottom line is I think he does have all the tools to be as good, if not better, than than the great Khabib. A hundred percent. I mean, they tra- they're brothers. I mean, they're not really brothers, but they've trained right. together like they were brothers since they were young. So they're 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 pulled from the same cloth. So absolutely, I love how Volkanovski challenged him. You know, you've got this this brick shit house of a man, Alexander Volkanovski, yeah. this rugby player. He's actually going up a weight class, but he really stepped up, man. That was a really really impressive loss, which is such a strange yeah. thing to say. You can come out better for, for losing a fight, though, in a lot of ways sometimes in mixed martial arts. It's rare, but Volkanovski yeah. may have done just that. I don't think Henry Cejudo, though, that last fight for me, that guy talks way too much, man. Too many antics for him. I was happy to see him lose. I thought it was a clear loss. Right. Uh, but to me, it's like those antics beforehand, when someone's just pumping themselves up that much, they're either absolutely you know in belief of themselves or they're delusional or they're just super insecure i don't know which with henry cejudo but i'm i was happy to see him lose it's all manufactured though i think with henry henry's a guy that you know every time i've talked to him real down to earth guy realizes what he's doing and, and realizes pretty much how ridiculous it is but uh i don't know we'll see what happens so he, with henry. So he knows the game he's playing well yeah, i he you, knows. you have to respect the guy though gold medalist yeah. two world titles so like look respect for sure it's just the antics part. I'm like, meh, pass. Well, I mean, think about this. There, There's a, a weird sort of uh, parallel with Henry and the man who beat him, Aljamain Sterling. Uh, Sterling is a guy that doesn't resonate with fans. People just don't like him the way that you think they should because, like, he's a great fighter. Don't get me wrong. But Aljo is a guy that, for whatever reason, unless you're from Long Island, you, you're not buying his T-shirt. Henry Cejudo, very similar. Has had the success, hasn't had the fan uh, appeal <laughs> that, that you would think he would. So he's sort of doubled down and went like, all right, I'm going to be the king of cringe where Aljo Quinn sticks to his guns. And, you know, you kind of see like the, the, the sort of result of that for Aljo it's just people still going to kind of be, you know, booing him a little bit for, for Cejudo. Some people love the cringe factor. Other people hate it, but if they're going to hate you already, you might as well give them something to hate you about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whatever his strategy is, look, it's worked in the past, uh, you know, but yeah, Al Jermaine, um, I don't know. There was that thing where he is the champion, but it's, right. it's kind of like shrug. Yeah, well, I, I think that uh, we're going to have to see him move up to, to 145 pounds before too long. And I think if there's a fight with him and Alexander Volkanovsky, I don't think too many people are going to be shrugging. Whoa, I would love to see that fight. He's got, I mean, here's the problem. You got Marab Dwalashvili, who's uh, Aljo's teammate. He's pretty much the number one contender at 135. I would love to see that fight. It's not going to happen. Get over your friendship, guys. We want to watch it. Nah, come on. I mean, if, if he's your brother, you can't fight your brother. It's not pro wrestling. You know what I mean? Like, I would rather them not fight. I'd rather see Alger move up to 45 than them force a fight they don't really want to have because it's one thing to, like, wrestle for your spot on a wrestling team. It's another thing to try to elbow someone's face in. Yeah, it's you know like an I mean? old Van Damme movie, though. You know, you just, like, you want to see it. I don't know. I hear least you. I, I mean... You just want to see people hate each other, Travis. Yeah. That's that's what it sounds like. You just want to see yeah. violence. What do you think of Adesanya's his uh, reclaiming oh of his confidence and his life back? It's the greatest uh, rematch. That was also like the fourth fight in you know rematch history, essentially. Like 
their their kickboxing affairs to me don't really have anything to play uh, in the MMA landscape of things. So I still think that they're one and one, and they very much should fight each other again. Yep. But how pers- how personal is that fight between those two? What I loved about it is when he got that knockout, when Adesanya got that knockout afterwards, he immediately took out three arrows. Oh my god! And basically shot him for each of the losses he had. Yeah. To me, it's just, that was such a poetic moment. And I love I love seeing that. I was really happy for him, even though I, I don't know any of these guys. I'm so invested in their journey, which is uh, just well, a testament to how good they are. Well, it goes back to what we were talking about with Aljo. It's like you need to make people feel. You know, Henry made people feel, even if it wasn't maybe the the, the way that you want to feel about somebody, you, you have to make people feel. And, uh, man, Adesanya made everyone feel something that night. He did. That was yeah. wild. No, 100%. Um, you know, we also have this sort of Mexican uprising right now in the UFC. For the longest time, there were no Mexican champions, no uh, Mexican-born champions. Now we have three, uh, Brandon Moreno, um, Alexa Grasso, and then you got a, a Yair Rodriguez, who's also a, uh interim champion, like, something's like i have no mexican roots i'm not breaking news here like i'm not i'm not you know mexican by any means but i i've always been attracted towards the mexican contingent of combat sports because they have such a diehard fan base it's mm. it's hard not to smile when you see the mexicans running game like they are right now in the ufc yeah when moreno won that his first belt uh the emotion that came out of him you know and and his pride for mexico yeah it was like it it was it made me tear up you know it's one of those things that i'm you always, what, what I love about this, too, is that as the UFC has been around now for 30 years, it's definitely planted itself globally where these different countries, you know, they've been working hard to, on, the, on the come up. And, and now yeah. it's starting to show, you know. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, it's a global sport. and It's finally feeling like more global than ever. You have, you know, representation. I mean, talk about uh, uh, Adesanya. I mean, with Nigerian roots, like mixed martial arts, having roots in Africa is something that not many people really thought about too much. And uh, maybe the octagon hits Africa before too long. I'd, I'd love to see it. Oh, man, I, that Kamaru Usman, Leon Edwards fight, that was wild. Because yeah. there every part of me was saying that Usman was going to reclaim his throne. Right. Yeah. And Leon, he surprised me and he dominated. And it was, it was a, it was a very clear victory there. And so now I don't know. I feel like Africa, Nigeria, wherever was going to have a, um, a UFC fight, but I don't know now since we'll Kamaru, see. what's, I don't even know his status anymore. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's got to go back to the proverbial drawing board and figure things out. I think uh, the first time we saw Kamaru pretty much win that fight, except, he didn't, you know what I mean? He was winning every second until the, the knockout. And then the second fight was just, or the third fight rather, was just absolutely mind-blowing when you think about what Edwards did. He looked like a different fighter. Now, is yep. it because of Edwards being that much better? Is it uh, Usman taking a step back and, and maybe showing, you know, the, the latter side of his downturn? You know, maybe, I hate to say past his prime, but he might be. I, I don't know. We'll see it what was, happens. It's, it's the two theories. Like once there was some little stat that was being sent around that when you become a champion, you become 20 or 30 percent better immediately. Right, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, that I was mean, something that I thought was interesting. And then when you get knocked out once by somebody, does that ever leave? So there yeah, was those I two things that were looming over that rematch that I, right. uh, that was, that was circling my brain. And yeah, Leon came through in a big way. Yeah. I mean, I think what's the, what's that uh, saying the kids have uh, Leon Edwards is living rent free inside the brain of uh, Kamar Usman. I think he's oh. definitely living there. So we'll, yeah. we'll see what happens now I, on, on the way out here, Travis, I, I know you got to talk to Conor McGregor. What do you think about Connor's, you know, eventual return? It sounds like he's going to fight Michael Chandler. Chandler doesn't seem to think so. There's some talk about whether or not, that fight is on a timeline that is relatively close to happening. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, what do you see if that fight does go down? Who do you favor? How does it go? I won't go against Connor. You know, he's, he's, he's worked incredibly hard to come back. I just saw the trailer for his documentary and it's going to document his journey coming yeah. through that injury. And I, I don't know. I, I feel like you can't count that guy out. I feel like he's been down for quite a while and you put someone like that down for a while He's, he's lost, what, four in a row, three in a row? Yeah, well, I, I mean, would, it's even magnified more when you factor in that injury. Yeah, I put my money on him, though. I feel like he's got a real big reason to come back and make a statement. Yeah, I think that if anybody can answer that call uh, with flying colors, it's Connor, right? Like, he's he's proven time and time again that there's no one, you know, willing to bet on themselves more 
than Conor McGregor, and he rarely loses. And even when he does lose, like the Poirier fight, I think a lot of it had to do with the injury, but Conor's a guy who generally loses with grace and comes out the the, the other side looking better mentally, if not anything, yeah. for his loss. Except uh, for that last fight. That last right. fight, he even admitted himself. Yeah. That it was because it was fear. Yeah, but I mean, talk about the endorphins that must be going through your mind when your leg snapped in half. You know what I mean? You got to do something. Yeah. You got to do As something to get over it. Dangling. Right. You know, but he's going up against Chandler, too. And Chandler, look, Chandler is an exciting guy to watch. Yeah. He, he leaves it all out there. But he's an exciting guy to watch lose. At least yeah. that's yeah. In the last, he is. you know, last two years. That's what we've done. But I love, I love how he just goes in there and he lets it all hang out. It's incredibly admirable. But I think because of that, he leaves himself open. And because yeah. of that, I think, I think Connor will win. Stylistically, it's a great matchup for Conor McGregor. Yep. Even with Chandler's wrestling ability, I mean, he's not going to come out and shoot a double leg. You know he's not. He's going to go out there and he's going to try to exchange some leather with Conor McGregor. And uh, no matter who wins or loses in that fight, I think you and I, as fans, we win. A hundred percent. And that's every Chandler fight. And I think he knows that. And that's why he's such a beloved UFC fighter. Because every fight he goes in, everyone's rooting for him. And they know they're going to get uh, you know, a match to remember. 100%. Very few people are as big a fight fans as Travis Van Winkle. Uh, so that makes me a fan of you, Travis. What can we uh, look forward to? What do you got coming up besides, obviously, the Roadhouse stuff that we talked about? Yeah, so Roadhouse, I don't know when that's coming out, uh, but I'll be in FUBAR on Netflix. It's a series with Schwarzenegger. comes out May 25th. So we're all in the CIA, and uh, he finds out his daughter's been secretly in the CIA all along, and we all join up and try to save the world. It's like a big dysfunctional family uh, basically trying to save humanity. It's it's quite ridiculous. It's a lot of fun. And uh, it drops May 25th. Well, I can't wait to uh, check it out. Travis, you're welcome uh, on the program anytime. It's always a pleasure chatting. And I uh, can't wait for Roadhouse and, and FUBAR as well. TJ, I'll be back. Thanks for having me.